Hi, people of CAD. Uh, welcome back to our series on everything you can ask yourself about praying in tongues. Prayer in tongues, why prayer in tongues, who can pray in tongues. Last time we went over who can pray in tongues. You can find uh, the link on the screen, on the bottom of your screen, if you just look for it. So this time we're gonna go over 10 reasons why you should speak in tongues or 10 reasons why anybody, any Christian should speak in tongues, So speak with tongues. So I'm gonna probably do it in two parts, part one and part two. So the first five reasons in part one and the, the first second reasons in part two. So let's get started. Hope you have your Bible as usual. I encourage you to check everything that I say, everything that I mention, of course. As I said in the previous videos, that I always try to back up everything that I say with a biblical verse. And if I don't have any scripture for what I'm saying, I just rather not say it because everything that we say, we should be able to back, back it up with the scripture because we're going by the scripture. I believe that the Bible is true from Genesis to Apocalypse, uh, to Revelations, to Revelation. So it's the word of God and that's what we're going by. That's what I'm abiding by. So without any further ado, let's get started. So we're going to go over 10 reasons why any Christian should speak in tongues. Any Christian, any believer should speak in tongues. The first reason, mm, it's a recommendation of Jesus. So Mark 16, 16 to 17, praying with tongues, speaking in another tongue, it's the recommendation of Jesus. So Mark 16, 17 says, and these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. So those are the last words of our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. Right before he goes to heaven. This is what he's telling his disciples. He says, uh, if you read the verse 16, it says, let me just read verse 16. So... We know what's that. So Mark 16, 16. So we have a better understanding for maybe those of you who just who are watching this video for the first time. So Mark 16, 16. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believes not shall be damned. So, and these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. So, the sign will follow those that believe. And as we saw last time, I mean, you believe, I believe, if you're a Christian, then you believe in Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, then those are the signs that will follow you. And prayer in tongues is one of them. So the reason, one of the reasons you should really speak in tongues is because it's a sign that will follow those that believe. And it's Jesus that said it. It's a recommendation for, from our Savior, just as casting out devils. I mean, you need to cast out that you need to cast out demons because there are always those spirits that are torment, tormenting us, tormenting us in you know most areas of our lives or our family, some family members, some friends. So it's very, very important for any Christian to be able to take authority and rebuke the devil and bind evil spirits, just as it is equally important for any Christian to be able to to speak with new tongues because it has its advantages, it has its benefits. And that's what we're going to see. I mean, the 10 reasons, in other words, are maybe 10 benefits, 10 advantages, 10 reasons, you know, that you should be speaking tongues. And the second one will be, um, so the second reason or the second benefit or the second advantage will be that you are defying yourself, you are edifying yourself. So let's read 1 Corinthians 14, 4, which says, He that speaks in an unknown tongue edifies himself, but he that prophesies edifies the church. Of course, 
we are interested in the first part. So part A that says, he that speaks in an unknown tongue edifies himself. So if you we go back to the root, we go back to the Greek, to the, the original text. The word edified in Greek, um, oikodo, oikodome. Sorry for the Greek speakers or those who know how to pronounce it. I'm just trying, but it's strong 3618 for those who like to double check it. And that word edifies literally means to build a house. I mean, the word that they're using oikodome means to build a house. So when you, you're speaking in tongues, you are building your house. I mean, your house that could be, you know, you, you are building yourself, you edifying yourself. It could also, I mean, it literally means building someone up. I mean, so you're building yourself up. You're helping yourself to stand. You're helping yourself to be strong and sturdy. So when you pray in tongues, you're building yourself up. And then by yourself, definitely, if you need to build a house as a being, as a human being, as a person, it's not your outside. I mean, it's not the temple. It's not your outside because depending, if you're an adult, then you have stopped growing up. I mean, you're already grown. And we know that when the Bible talks about us, it talks really about our inner being. Because in the book of Job, it says that truly in man is the spirit. So it's really your spirit inside of you. So what you're doing, you're building up your spirit. And I always like to give this example to people. The same way we eat food, we exercise, you know, we watch our diet, we watch, you know, what kind of food we eat, what kind of activity we, we do. We, you know, a baby or a child that is growing up, we take care of them because their body needs to be strong. Their body needs to build up. They need to grow. They need to come up to maturity, to fully grow. And even when you're an adult, you still take care of your body. You go to the gym, you do some exercises, you try to maintain your body. So the same way, you need to build up your spirit because remember, you are born again. So you're just a baby. You are a baby. And as a baby, I mean, you're not born again in your flesh. You're born again in the spirits in the book of John, John 1, 12, 1, 12 to 13. It says, who are not born of the flesh, nor, nor of the blood, nor of the will of men, but of the spirit, of the will of God. So it's really your spirit that you are building up, your spirit that needs to grow, that needs to leave that state of being a baby, to becoming mature, to reaching that full stature of Christ. So when you pray in tongues, prayer in tongues is a way to build up to build up, to build your house, to build your spirit, to build up yourself, yourself, your inner being, your true being, which is your spirit. So that's the second reason. You are building up your spirit. When you pray in tongues, you're building up yourself. You're edifying yourself. And the third reason or the third point, when you pray in tongues, you are giving excellent thanksgiving. So the verse for this is 1 Corinthians 14, 17. Again, 1 Corinthians 14, 17, which says, For thou verily give thanks well, but the other is not edified. If you want to have better understanding of what Paul is talking about, you can read the verses that come before it. It's 1 Corinthians 14. But Paul is telling them that you are giving thanks well. Well, I don't like this version. The reason is it's not really close to the, I mean, the translation in from the original text. I will read a French version that is very close to the original text. And then I'll give you the original word in Greek and everything and the strong reference. So people that like to check Greek and stuff can check. So in French, it says... Tu rends, il est vrai, d'excellentes actions de grâce, mais l'autre n'est pas édifié. So you are giving truly excellent thanksgiving.
but the other is not edified. So in Greek, in the original language, the word that they use in English in your Bible, well, that word well, is kalos or kalos in Greek, and it's strong 2573, which means beautifully, finely, excellently, or well. And if we go further in just the definition of that word well or kalos that they're using, one of the definition is, so kalos means rightly so that there shall no there shall be no room for blame. So as if, you know, when you're speaking, as if someone is, somebody's giving a speech or is talking, is talking rightly, is talking so rightly that there will be no room or there is no room for blame. So it's a perfect speech. It's a perfect language. It's a perfect tongue or it's a perfect expression. Excellently, nobly, commendably. So that's what it really means. So when you pray in tongues, you are giving excellent thanksgiving. So in your speech, in your thanksgiving, there is no room for blaming. There is no room for mistake. There is no room for, you know, something imperfect. What you're doing is perfect. I mean, it's spotless. It's blameless. And that is the difference. We don't forbid people to pray in your mother tongue, in your language, in English or in French or in any other language that you speak. You are encouraged to do so. And as we saw last time that Paul said it clearly, you shall speak with the spirit, you shall speak in tongues, but you should speak with your understanding too. You shall do both. But the thing is, you can give thanksgiving in English. You can give thanksgiving in French or in any other language that you want to give thanksgiving to. But know this, those languages are not perfect. I mean, you are not perfect. And there is no way you can use French or any other language, English or any other language to make a perfect prayer to God. I mean, that's a finite language. And you experience that as well as myself. We all do experience that sometimes when you're praying, you're praising God in your language, you have that sensation, you have that feeling that it's like you know what you want to say, but whatever words you use, you are not reaching that point. You're just not reaching what God is. I mean, any intelligible language, any intelligible, exp intelligible expression cannot express what God really is, cannot express what you really want to say to God, how you really want to praise to God, the praise and the worship that you want to give to God. There is no such thing. I mean, there's no such word. There is no such adjective that can really express what it is. I mean, you just want to add and you're just turning around. You're adding these, you're adding adverbs. You, you're trying to make it like to fill it to fill it up because you know and you feel that you're saying things but it's not really reaching that point where God is. That's because it's in a perfect language, it's in a perfect way of expression. But God wants us to worship and praise him in our in, even in our imperfection or in those imperfect, you know, tongues. I mean, he still wants us to praise him with our words, to praise him with our hearts, to praise him with our beings. But wonderfully, but fortunately, praise God for the Holy Spirit. Praise God for prayer in tongues. That's a way, that's a prayer that God gave us. So we could praise him, we could give thanks well, we could give thanks excellently, we could give thanks perfectly without any room for blame without any room to be blamed amen so that's one reason the fourth reason you are not hindering yourself so you are not hindering yourself and that will need further explanation let's read first corinthians still first corinthians 14 so now verse 39 the bible says wherefore brethren covet to prophesy and forbid not to speak with tongues well the bible is clear you are to forbid not to speak in tongues you cannot forbid anybody to speak in tongues you cannot even forbid yourself to speak in tongues and that word forbid 
Colliete in Greek, strong 2967, is to hinder, to prevent, to restrain, to withhold a thing from anyone. So you should not restrain anybody to speak in tongues. Your pastor should not restrain you to speak in tongues. Your brother, your aunt, your, congreg your congregation, anybody, include, including yourself. You cannot restrain yourself from speaking in tongues because you go right against this verse. So by speaking in tongues, you are not restraining yourself from speaking in tongues. And that's the reason you should speak in tongues. So you're fulfilling this verse. You are not forbidding yourself to speak in tongues by speaking in tongues. You're doing that because, look, if you know it's a recommendation of the Lord Jesus Christ, if you know it's something good that God will never recommend you something that is not good, but you are not doing it, or maybe you don't do it because you don't know anything about it, but at the same time, You're not even trying to do anything about it so you can speak in tongues. So in a way, you are in that category of people that are forbidding, are restraining themselves not to speak in tongues. Not because they know how to speak in tongues and they don't want to, but just because they don't know how to and they don't do anything about it. I mean, if you don't know how to cast out devils and you're tormented by spirits, evil spirits, you'll run to your pastor. I mean, he will pray for you, but definitely you have to learn how to cast out devils by your own because your pastor is not going to be with you 24 hours out of seven. So the things that you don't know how to do, but, the, but, that, but that the Bible recommends you to do, you will run to somebody so you can learn how to do them. Definitely. And that's a reason, you know, that's a way to learn to do them. I mean, that's a, a way not to restrain yourself from doing them. Because if you need to cast out an evil spirit, you need to know how to do it. And if you don't know how to do it, you need to run to somebody that knows how to do it so he can teach you how to do it. Or you run to your Bible and you read in the Bible how to do it and you put it in practice. So it's the same thing. If you don't pray in tongues because you never prayed in tongues, because nobody ever told you about it, well, I'm telling you about it today. And there is no reason for you not to speak in tongues today. If you don't know how to do it, well, the Bible is here. We have teachings, we have explanation, we can help you. We can walk you through the Bible with all the verses to help you speak in tongues because it's definitely very, very important for you because it's in the Bible. So by looking, by looking further into it, by trying to understand, by going in the word of God and being willing to obey God's recommendation, being willing to aspire to that gift, to look earnestly to this gift of praying in tongues, you are not restraining yourself from praying in tongues. So you are fulfilling this first. Otherwise, you just fall into that category. Either you forbid other people to pray in tongues, you forbid yourself to pray in tongues, either you have prayed in tongues before and you don't want to pray in tongues anymore, or you've never prayed, you don't know how to pray, you still are restraining yourself from praying in tongues because You can really go out there and find resources, find people that will help you to operate in this gift that God has freely given unto us. Amen. So the fifth point and the last one for this part one, you are building up your faith. So when you pray in tongues, you are building up your faith. Well, We know that the apostle asked Jesus, the disciple asked Jesus to increase their faith. And Jesus, you know, told them, if you had faith like a mustard seed, you know, you could tell to this mountain, just, you know, throw yourself in the water and that mountain will go in the water. For so people that are interested, in not maybe in increasing their faith, but in building up their faith, in strengthening their faith. Because as we'll read in the book of Jude, chapter 120, I mean, there's only one chapter in the book of Jude, but, and we'll just go further into the word that we're using here. So Jude 120, Jude chapter 1, verse 20. But ye beloved building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. So, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. We will see later on, because we'll use this expression again and again, that the, this expression, praying in the Holy Ghost, praying in the Spirit, 
praying with the spirit or praying in tongues, it's really the same thing. It's used over and over and over in the same context. So the Bible is saying here that when you pray in the Holy Ghost or when you pray in tongues, you are building up yourselves. And that word build in Greek really means to build upon, upon a foundation. And we know as Christians that our foundation is Jesus. I mean, he is the stone that was rejected, but that became the cornerstone. So Jesus is our foundation, is the rock, is our foundation. So when we're praying in tongues, we're building upon that foundation. And what are we building? We're building our faith. So when you pray in tongues, you also build your faith. Like in really the sense of strengthening your faith, like build your faith in strengthening your faith and just building it. So that was the faith point. And just to just give a quick, quick summary, we saw that we should pray in tongues first. It's a recommendation of Jesus. Second, because you're defying yourself, your spirit. Third, you're giving excellent thanksgiving. And fourth, by speaking in tongues, you are not restraining yourself from speaking in tongues. And last one, you are building up your faith. You're building up your faith. Amen? So we'll continue in part two with the other five reasons why any Christian, any believer should speak in tongues. God bless you and see you soon.